welcome everybody to Get your Unity. microphone. Get your mic. Oh, where is it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is my first time. Woo <laughs> welcome everybody to Unity Rural Beach here at Salem Road. And uh, I welcome all those on Facebook and Zoom. And my name is Carol DeLue. And to begin, I want to share a passage from A Course in Miracles. It's Lesson 189, verse 8, or passage 8. It is not he who knows, is it not he who knows the way to you? You need not know the way to him. Your part is simply to allow all obstacles that you have imposed between the Son of God the Father to be quietly removed forever. God will do his part in joyful and immediate response. Ask and receive, but do not make demands, nor point the road to God by which he should appear to you. The way to reach him is merely to let him be. For in that way is your reality proclaimed as well. And so today we do not choose the way in which we go to him, but we choose to let him come. And with this choice we rest. And in our quiet hearts and open minds, his love will blaze a pathway of itself. To start off our music, um, our music team here, David Lacombe, Patty, Penny and her grandchild, Charlotte, Pam and Ann will sing Low River Flow. I'm Maureen. And Maureen, sorry, I Oh, take me where I need you go.
now take a moment of silence and I will share with you the Lord's Prayer of Jesus, which is translated from the Aramaic, the original language of Jesus. Father, mother, brother, and breath of all, create a space inside of us and fill it with your presence. Let oneness now prevail. Your one desire then flows through ours as energy fills all form. Give us this day our physical and spiritual nourishment and untangle the knots of air that bind us as we release others. Do not let appearances make us forgetful of the source, but free us to act appropriately. From age to age, through you, will flow the glorious harmonies of life. May these words be fertile statements through which our future grows. Amen, amen. And the daily word for today is uh, thankfulness is my heart's natural expression. I need no special reason to be thankful, no list of blessings to inspire gratitude. Unity author Rever Eric Butterworth wrote, one can be grateful with the same spontaneity as being happy. It simply flows forth from within and becomes a causative energy. With a thankful mind and heart, I release worry and frustration, trusting that my every need will be met. I discover more of God's presence in myself and others. Everywhere I go, I see possibilities for good, even in a challenging circumstance. Eager to share my thankfulness, I welcome opportunities to be of service to others, just as I gratefully accept blessings shared with me. I live in the flow of life, love, peace, and abundant beauty. I am thankful. And the Bible reading from 1 Thessalonians 5, 15, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus to you. Um, before we go into our meditation song, Margaret is going to introduce our guest this morning. Thanks, Carol. If I find that pink pen, can I keep it? No. <laughs> it's an awfully nice pink pen. <laughs> so one thing we haven't been doing since we've been meeting outside and not in the big building at Surfside anymore, which is now happily in the hands of new owners. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We want to welcome any first-time guest or anyone who hasn't been here in a long time and these lights are so bright right now, it's hard for me to see exactly who's out there. Any first-time visitors, I know Tina is, I'll introduce her in a moment, and Karen from Seattle. Anybody else, first-time visitors? Okay, we're all, good. we're all home folk. Okay, so we want, I'm sorry, what? They're pointing at Kate Richter and her hair is so long. She's ah, not a no, visitor. No, no, no. This oh, no. is Kate Richter. Girl <laughs> 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 said, she's new. She's new. <laughs> so, I'm Kate Richter and I am a Unity Alliance member. So we want to welcome uh, one of our Unity ministers from Seattle, Washington, Reverend Karen Lindvik. So let them see you, Karen. Welcome. <laughs> came all the way from Seattle just for this service. <laughs> Actually, she's visiting with Maureen Levy, who you all know, and we're happy that Karen's here today. Also, we're going to be hearing this morning from another visitor, Tina Christensen, who's the executive director of Waccamaw River Keepers. 
and you'll hear more about her in a little while. So welcome to everybody. And uh, last week someone dropped in and asked about this place, and I expect we're going to be having more visitors soon as people discover us in this new location. Okay, so now we are going to have the meditation song, and then I'll do the meditation, we'll go into the message. And the meditation song is, I Send My Love. Joyce Rip, if you're watching on live stream, thank you for bringing this song to us. I Send My Love. saying to one another, come over here, they're singing, they're singing. So I invite each one of us to get settled in our seats, let ourselves become still, and taking a few deep breaths, let our breaths be those of gratitude, of awe and wonder as we watch springtime happen all around us. The gratitude for gathering again in person in this place, at this time, this moment that we're called to, to be the light of the world, to be a field of consciousness, of peace, compassion, forgiveness, understanding, 
creativity, forward thinking, seeing ourselves in the great flow and movement of humankind, the evolving of our species, the opening of our hearts and our minds to have ears to hear and eyes to see. What is true? And what is the healing balm for our world in this moment? I invite you to listen to the words of a poet named Kim Downey, whose ancestry included African American and Blackfoot Indian. Her words become a prayer for us this morning. Grandfathers, breathe me in like a drop of rain turning me into moisture that will help the people. White buffalo woman, hold me like a newborn child, turning me into a loving heart that will help the people. Four-legged, winged ones, all sisters, let me in turning me into a sacred thought that will help the people. We take another deep breath. We call on the core of our wisdom to feel our connection with the one presence, the one power known by many names. Grandfather, breathe me in like a drop of rain. Turn me into moisture that will help the people. White buffalo woman, hold me like a newborn child, turning me into a loving heart that will help the people. Four-legged, winged ones, all sisters let me in, turning me into a sacred thought that will help the people. We breathe into this divine idea that we are the sacred thoughts of one presence. We are called to this time to be a helping presence. So we give our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, our words, our actions over to this divine calling, this divine idea. That you and I have a part in creating the field of consciousness we call peace. field of consciousness that we call love. And for those energies that we surely do feel here in this place, on this land, we give thanks for all those who preceded us, the ancestors who walked this land, long before there was a Myrtle Beach. The indigenous peoples who walked this land 
and then in more recent history, the African Americans who settled in this very area after emancipation, creating their farms here, walking this land before us. And we bless all those yet to come and we give thanks for our part. Our part in being the healing balm, the energy that helps to create peace in the world, in this place. And we give thanks in the name and in the light of that living presence within each one of us. And we say, so it is, and so we let it be. Namaste. Namaste. Ah. <coughs> First form of amen. Ah. <laughs> so all week we've been looking at the weather report, and all week it was saying, Rain, no, just kidding, not rain, yep, rain, no, just kidding. <laughs> Thank you. Sunshine, bird sounds, fresh air. Good to see everybody and good to see all of you on live stream. Carol, just for you to know, there's a message on live stream that says, Good job, Grandma Carol. <laughs> just wanted you to know. <laughs> so today we are going to hear from. Tina Christensen, who is the new executive director of Waccamaw River Keepers. It was Cynthia that called me and said, this is one of our organizations that we tithe to. It's Earth Day. Let's hear from the new and first of all time executive director of Waccamaw River Keepers. So we're going to be glad to hear from you in a moment, Tina. I was looking back at my notes and on my PowerPoint slides and looking back through my computer files, and you might be interested that four years ago, 2017, on Sunday, April 23rd, do you all all remember what we were doing? Yes. No? Okay. I spoke on the topic, Living in the Abundant Flow. Oh, yes. <laughs> a lot about flow here today. We sang the song, I've Got Peace Like a River, that Sunday. And then after service, we had a capital campaign, afternoon tea, and a steering committee meeting about finding a new property and selling the Surfside building. So that was four years ago today. <laughs> Kate, go ahead. You can... <laughs> we started our capital campaign in 2016, by the way. And one year ago today, you remember what we were doing one year ago today? No? Okay. And the issue of our Natural Awakenings magazine here on the Grand Strand, we announced that Reverend Marilyn Maddox, Unity Minister, was leading the book Healing Letters by Myrtle Fillmore. Our book group was reading Rising Strong by Brene Brown. And Unity Game Night had just been announced here at Salem Road with potlucks. Remember potlucks? <laughs> we'll have those again soon one day. We also had planned for the month of April last year a healing fire for uh, ceremony for healing the waters of the earth. That was going to be with Reverend Lindsley Field, shamanic teacher and intuitive healer. We canceled that because at that moment we were right in the throes of trying to figure out what to do with the COVID and as you will recall, most of you were on the planning team. We had a big Earth Day event planned here with vendors and food trucks and artists, and we canceled that. So let's take a deep breath. We're back. We're back. And on that Sunday, the 19th, right here under the pavilion, Amy Armstrong, attorney Amy Armstrong, an echo lawyer with the South Carolina Environmental Law Project, was our speaker that Sunday. Most of you weren't here for that. We had a precious few that Sunday. Still, we were figuring out the COVID issues. So let's take a deep breath. We have, that's just a little snippet of what we've been up to here at Unity Myrtle Beach, low these many years. And today, for our Earth Day Sunday, again, we are welcoming Tina Christensen. Executive Director for the Winya Rivers Alliance, who we call 
Waccamaw River Keepers. <laughs> She'll tell us more about that. Really good work being done through this organization, and it's one of the organizations that this church sends tithes to. For all the donations and tithes that come in, we turn around and bless local community organizations that are doing good work. So Tina, come on up here and we're gonna hear some brief remarks from Tina about the good work that they're doing. Thank you. I'll start off by saying uh, I absolutely get nervous in front of a lot of people, so I will struggle through the beginning of this, but promise it will get better as we go along. <laughs> That's why not many people came. <laughs> My name is Tina Christensen. I am the brand new, first time, a full-time executive director for Winyo Rivers Alliance, and thrilled to be here. We can't possibly thank you enough for the gifts that you give us that allow us to keep doing the work that we're doing. Um, I've been very blessed to live in beautiful parts of the country in my life and uh, for a very long time lived in the Finger Lakes of uh, upstate New York, very rural, um, very beautiful area. And the story of why they're the Finger Lakes is that the Native Americans believe that the Spirit put his hand on the land to bless it. And when he did, he made such a strong impression that uh, water filled the area there and they became the Finger Lakes. And that area for us was a region that uh, depended on the, on the water and the earth. We had a number of farmers for many, many years, and uh, then following that has become a number of grape vineyards and now producing wine. And I was able to live in that community and, and raise my children. And about a year and a half ago, uh, my husband retired and we finally made the trek to South Carolina where we have dreamed of living for 25 years and plan to live out our retirement and the rest of our life here. We were drawn here because of the waters. Um, it is just incredibly beautiful, visited for so many years and enjoyed so much of both the ocean and the rivers. Um, was amazed after we you know, got here and started to settle in to see more and more of the beauty that you don't see when you just, you know, drive in for a vacation. And as we settled in, became aware of the opening for Winyaw Rivers Alliance and, and felt a calling. Um, felt like it was where I was supposed to be and supposed to be helping because I always found that if I went to nature, if I went out, I was able to settle myself, to find calm, find grace, find peace, and, um, uh, unite with with nature and so as uh, as the position came open and I learned more about what the river keepers did it, it just aligned so perfectly with with uh, where we wanted to be and what I wanted to do so let me tell you just a little bit about Waccamaw River Keepers and uh, what they do and what you're supporting um, we have uh, in our organization a, a Waccamaw River Keeper who her job is part scientist, um, part teacher, part advocate, um, and, uh, and a person who lives and works in the community on a full-time basis. And her number one priority and our mission is to make sure that our waters are fishable, drinkable, and swimmable. Yay. We just want to make sure <laughs> that the water that you enjoy is safe and fresh and clean. And so Kara um, and a number of volunteers on a weekly basis go out and collect water samples and then test that water and just make sure that uh, there's enough oxygen, there's not too much pH, that, the, that there isn't um, uh, pollutants in there or bacteria that are making it unsafe for us. And then all of that data from the volunteers and from our river keepers is uploaded into a database and we just track that information to make sure that um, there isn't something that's happening within the water that could um, be harmful to any of us. And if we find that, then we're gonna try to look at the sites where those were collected and try to figure out what's going on in between those sites that uh, would make that happen. 
We also do, on a regular basis, uh, cleanups, litter cleanups. And for the last five weeks, we've been doing one at every landing on the Waccamaw River. And uh, CARE uh, will uh, collect all the information about what they find and weigh it. We collected in five weeks at five different landings 2,500 pounds of litter that uh, that we just found along the shores and in the parks, in the public parks. So incredibly important that none of that made it into the river and eventually into the bay and into the ocean. And so um, we have regular cleanups um, on all year round and we even have adopt a landings that people will, groups or families, will take a landing and say, we're gonna go out there once a month and we're gonna make sure that it gets picked up. And we provide all the supplies for those cleanups. And then we have a new program called Swim Guide. And it's an app on your phone where you're able to uh, open the app and look and see if you have an area where you're gonna recreate um, boat, kayak, swim, fish, you can look on there and you can see what we recently found out when we did water monitoring for that area. And you can look and see if there's any reason to be concerned about jumping in the river in, uh, in that region. And then the, the last thing that we do is advocacy. Um, Kara will make sure that she likes to think of herself as the Lorax for the river. <laughs> she says, that, you know, it can't speak for itself, so I need to speak for it. So oftentimes she's just going to council meetings or um, speaking out on projects that there might be a better solution to than the one that's put forward, that there might be a way that that project could be adjusted so that it, it uh, assures that the water remains clean and that we're not um, gonna have flooding in the future for that area. Um, all of the work that we're doing couldn't be done without champions like you, people who are joining in on cleanups, people that are making uh, ties that, that go to you know the, the cost of our organization and uh, people that are just speaking out to say it's important that we you know, take care of the earth, that we make sure that the water is clean. So I'm here to say thank you, thank you, thank you. We deeply appreciate what you do and uh, certainly um, look forward to learning more about your church. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are y'all the ones that outlined and do the blue trail? That's us. That's yep. you. <laughs> we need to go on those blue trails. We've only done a tiny bit. Yeah. So for canoeing and kayaking, the blue river trails. And I'll just say, I have beautiful maps in my car that are waterproof. If anybody, it, it goes from Lake Waccamaw all the way to Georgetown. Oh, and then, yeah. Yay. They're kayakers, they're beautiful. You, they get them wet and you stick them right to your boat. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> I will go get them. Okay, thank you, Tina. I just want to thank all of us for doing our part to help take care of the earth. I know it seems daunting sometimes, but you just do, uh, like Patty brought us this word, micro-progressions. We progress in tiny little ways. What we call around here small, huge things. You know, we do a small thing that becomes a, makes a huge difference. So, this is Earth Day Sunday, and to wrap up, I just want to talk a little bit about Thomas Berry. He uh, was a Catholic priest who became known as the father of environmentalism. We've talked about him here before. But part of what I want to share, um, is Charlotte still in the... Charlotte, leave right there. Oh. Charlotte, there's Charlotte. Charlotte, I don't know what age you are, honey. Are you nine. about She's nine. nine? Okay, well, this man, Thomas Berry, was only a few years older than you, Charlotte. He was 12 when he went into a meadow in Greensboro, North Carolina, where he lived at the time. <clears throat> and at 12 years old, when he walked into the meadow, he became aware of a stillness, of a silence. And he could hear the crickets and the birds. And he became aware of a presence that he later would call God or love. He said it was the first time he felt himself connected with 
the all that is. He said, in a simple meadow, a simple moment of simply pausing to feel, to listen, and to intuit that we are surrounded and in fact, and filled with and created by this, this divine and wonderful presence known by many names. And that was his introduction into his spiritual calling and what would become work for the environment so that he became known as the father of environmentalism. He said he saw that field as a sacred site and some of you know that when I drove in my car right to the entrance here, I stopped my car and I felt the same thing before I ever even came onto the property. I felt the sacredness, something that was established here long before we came onto the land. And I want to give thanks for that because in all of the activities and all of the repairs and the decisions and the meetings and the, the ongoing maintenance and what's ahead of us for build and what's ahead of us for these days that our part in this experience we call Unity Myrtle Beach, when we're tired or when our muscles ache from pushing the wheelbarrow and using the shovel to plant another tree, that we pause and give thanks that we are a part of something sacred. And we don't know all of the ways that this place and our presence here will make a difference for peace. Sites become sacred because of what's gone on before we got here. And then sites become sacred by what we bring to this place. Our thoughts, our words, our actions. What we do here helps to enforce and increase this energy of sacred presence. Thomas Berry said, those fortunate enough to have such experiences as this. Sense a unification with all of nature and sense a unification with all life. The word we use is what? Unity. <laughs> so this sense of unity often includes feelings of bliss, often includes experiences of interspecies communication, often includes waking visions, insights, spiritual moments of aha, often in a sacred place, we hear at a different, different level, a deeper level. Thomas Berry said, in these places, we feel synchronicities and we feel ancient memory. I don't feel I'm stretching it too far to sense all of that in this place that we call Salem Road. It's still hard for me to call it the church. <laughs> I think most of us are still referring to it as the property, the new land, Salem Road, eventually. <laughs> so I've started practicing this week calling it Unity Center. He went on to say, I cannot stress enough the value of sacred places and the value they will have in future. I cannot stress enough that these places are portals, doorways to the sacred. And again, in all of our activities and projects, we'll hear more about them at the town hall today. And all that it takes to get to this point Please let us pause often to feel the sacred energy of this place and the work that we're involved in here. The view of sacred places is exemplified in spiritual 
spiritual paths and religions all over the world, then Sanskrit, a sacred place, is known to be a crossing over place, a path or a passage place, a place where people come to find themselves and cross from confusion to simple wisdom. I like that. A sacred place <clears throat> helps us to cross from confusion to a sacred wisdom. And again, am I stretching it too far? No. Thank you, Kay. I'm just going to check my time. Okay. One little boy said, you know what it means when a minister takes out his watch and looks at it? Nothing. <laughs> no, but today it means something because I know we have a town hall ahead of us and many of you are staying for that. So, Thomas Berry, he said this, he said there are two, and we may or may not agree, but this is what Thomas Berry, this great philosopher and spiritual teacher and environmentalist said. He said there's two big failures in the 20th century. Everybody take a deep breath. In his opinion, two biggest failures in the 20th century, education and religion. Now, Unity doesn't like to look at itself as a religion, but in fact, we have been named officially as a religion. But Thomas Berry went on to say, if we can teach this, and if our churches can example this, that we are in a community with all beings, no exclusions. We are called to awaken images of healing for the human race and for the earth. We are experiencing a collective psychosis, he said, our split from the rest of nature. And so therefore let us experience a collective healing and renewal. Isn't that beautiful? So, with a deep breath, I'd like to close for today, because again, I know we have a town hall right after this service. And by the way, this is an important announcement. The bathrooms in the building are open for you, and you can certainly use the bathrooms in the building. So, good to know. Good to know. From our Reverend Eric Butterworth, one of our favorite Unity teachers, he says this, the whole universe is on your side. Did you know that? Yeah. The whole universe is on your side. Life is forever biased on the side of healing, on the side of overcoming, and on the side of success. When you get yourself centered in the universal flow, you become synchronized with this divine bias for good. So again, we've come a long way. Today at Town Hall, we'll hear some about that and where we are now and where we're going from here. And I want us to remember this, that we're in a community with all beings and the whole universe is on our side here at Unity Myrtle Beach. That life is forever biased on the side of our healing, our overcoming and our success for Unity Myrtle Beach. We are centered in the universal flow and we are synchronized with our divine good. And everybody in the church said, Amen. Amen. Okay. Carol, I'll call you back up to take it away from here. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Reverend Margaret. And while the um, our music team is getting ready, for the next song, which will be What a Wonderful World, we'll have our offering, and Reverend Gervais Phillips will give the blessing for the offering. Say a few words. Three times on a row. In a row. Uh, on a roll. Three strikes, you're out. Yeah, you wouldn't. Uh, uh, you know, one of the things that I, I really like to do is celebrate uh, all that God has given me. And I do that every day. I'm, I'm grateful for all that I receive. And one of my themes is you can't outgive God. 
the more you give, the more you get back. And so uh, I'm going to, you may not know this about me. I, I said last time I'm a retired unity minister, but I'm also a ex-Baptist minister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 1960, I was uh, licensed to preach. Uh, 1960, that's, that's a long time ago, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was ordained the Baptist church in uh, uh, 1965. I finished uh, my seminary training, and um, and later I got out of that because I just couldn't handle the politics of what was going on there, and I just decided I'd become a probation officer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and why not? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, later I went back and uh, went, spent two years out at Unity Village, uh, at training as a Unity minister, and the rest is history. But I invite you to take your tithe and offering, just hold something in your hand. Imagine it in your hand if you don't have that. But hold it in your hand so we can give a blessing to it. And thank you, God, for all that, I, that comes to me and all that I give. That it might go forth and do its work. Thank you, God, and so it is on you. blessing to the offering. We want to know that it goes forth to do its work in this ministry and that it returns to each giver heaped up, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Thank you God for the abundant flow of your good in our lives. And so it is. Amen. 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 Thank you, Gervais. I uh, want to invite everybody to join us here next Sunday for an outdoor service. And our speaker will be our wonderful Reverend Margaret Hiller again. And uh, just one or two quick, quick announcements. Um, for the next two Tuesdays, May, no, the next two Tuesdays, but Tuesday after next, May the 4th and the 11th, 
we will be starting a unity overview class right here at the pavilion, 1030 to 1230. Everybody's welcome. And it's a review for those who are new to unity and just want to learn a little bit more about, um, about the unity. And the facilitator will be Reverend Margaret. And now uh, our prayer of unity. Listen carefully. The words have been changed just a little bit. The light of God surrounds us and the presence of love enfolds us. The power of peace protects us and the one presence that lives within all creation enfolds us. Wherever we are, love is, peace is, light is, and all is well. Now, if everybody will stand up and we'll sing our peace song. social justice dialogue on the issue of racism in this country. So we want to invite anyone, even if you haven't read the book or if you haven't been with us, that is by Zoom, one more social justice dialogue this Thursday evening. Please stay for town hall with us. We're going to have lots of wonderful news and we're going to be on Zoom as well for those who couldn't be here in person. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And remember, you're the light of the world. We know who you are. You're the light of the world. Namaste. Namaste.